So uh, let's take a break from review this week and why don't I share a short story with you. Uh, one of the things you don't see a lot is me talking about my gear, right? Or my audio buddy's gear. And uh, the sad truth is, although we have some really nice gear, we rarely listen to it, to them. The last time I powered up my Macintosh 275 or 240 was like months ago. Part of the reason is because my audio buddies and I are too busy testing gear that we don't actually have time to listen to our own stuff. On top of testing for me, some of them own enough gear to open up an audio store, so that's why most of the gear we own is just collecting dust. Here, let me show you a short clip of what Mr. Kanta has in one of his audio rooms. He has three rooms. Man, this is a disease. We just want to own, 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 but never have the time to listen to it. Now, there is some good to it though. If you switch between high-end audio and entry level frequently, you appreciate more your higher-end gear. Now, I remember telling a friend of mine one day, you have no idea what you have here. You see, he owns a $300,000 system, and I told him, if you eat filet mignon every day, your appreciation of me filet mignon is nowhere near my appreciation. I can appreciate your hi-fi system way more than you can. So every time when I switch to my higher end gear, I am in awe. It is like falling in love again for the first time. So today's video is about my experience at Mr. Kanta's home the other day. I told him, hey, you know what? It's been a while since we do some A-B tests. We used to do it frequently before COVID. And now that we are both vaccinated, yeah, you know what, let's do it. Oh, for those of you who might not re have realized, this is an audio channel, so let's not discuss anything beyond audio, okay? I'm just saying, in case you did not realize it. So Mr. Cantor and I are big, are big fans of audio research, Macintosh and Focal. For many years, our dream was to own them. And now that Mr. Cantor have both, I thought it would be perfect to see which one is better, right? Macintosh or audio research. So sure, some of you will be like, Thomas, come on, this is not a fair fight. They're from different period and also different price. 100% true. But you know what? When I get together with my friends, we do stuff just for fun. For us, we just wanted to know which one is better. Well, which one, the one that we have is better. It's not like we're submitting a report to the Association of YouTube Audio Files for approval. Some of you will say, yeah, that's a question of taste. Yeah, yeah, that's my line when I review stuff. But this is not a review. It is just my preference. Now, what I will appreciate is if you can like the video for all the effort I put in, into making this video. You have to forgive the video quality in today's video because most of the footage was shot with my cell phone. Also, this is not going to be a review of both combo but rather just you know, sharing with you our impression of how these two systems compare to each other. On the right corner, you have the Macintosh C2300 tube preamp and the legendary MC275 MK6 tube power amp. The preamp uses 612AX78, while the C275 delivers 75 watts per channel by using just 4KT88 and a few other small tubes. This is the current 6th generation model. The combo has an MSRP of a lot of months of eating instant noodles to save up. Now on the left corner, you have the once popular Audio Research LS25 MK2, which uses four 6H30 tubes and the reference 75 power amp, which uses four KT150. The combo has an MSRP of 5,000 packs of instant noodles more than the Macintosh combo, assuming a pack of the instant noodle is a dollar. Both systems were tested on a pair of Focal Sopra 2 and the source is the affordable Topping D90 DAC. Yes, you heard that right. When I said the Topping D90 was a giant killer, it was not because I was bought off by Topping, but I truly meant it. Mr. Kanta Ming DAC is the Topping D90 and the Matrix Element I. Now, I know some of you might not have found the Topping D90 to be a giant killer, but I can tell you, in a system that has an MSRP of $30,000, the Topping D90 will surprise you. Then again, a lot of DAX today can do the same, so no big deal. So, 
Which combo sounds better? The Macintosh combo has a thicker mid-range with more body, a bigger soundstage, bass has a lot more meat and fatter. Although slower, it does dig very deep, and I love the fact that it sounds like a 2M. The Macintosh wins hands down by a million miles in the looks department. Just the powering up sequence of the Macintosh 275 alone is worth its asking price. Let me show you a short video clip here. On the other hand, the audio research has a completely different sound. Overall, it sounds faster and definitely more precise. The KT150 tubes, although also outputs only 75 watts like the Macintosh 275, it hits harder and deeper. And the tonality is more neutral with a linear mid-range and better layering in the soundstage. The soundstage feels as solid as the Macintosh Despite the audio research uses 6H30 and KT150 tubes, which are known not for being tubish, this combo sounds tubish, which we did not expect. That is the thing about Synergy. You never know until you plug it in. All the amps I've heard that uses KT150 don't have a lot of air and sound solid state. Now this includes $10,000 plus amps, but this combo has a lot of air and sounds like a tube amp. Even though the Macintosh might have a bigger soundstage, I found there is more air in the audio research soundstage. Between the two systems, I prefer the audio research mostly because of the precision and airiness. Now, I am personally a big fan of Macintosh. Like I own Macintosh gear myself. I like color and warmth in the presentation. But in this case, the audio research got my vote. Now things might have changed if we simply change the DAC, and that's the annoying part about gear matching. Mr. Cantor told me he has spent many years listening to audio research. At his place, he has tried the LS2, SP8, LS16, LS25, LS27, LS28. So he's kind of tired of the audio research sound. As a result, overall, he actually now prefers the Macintosh sound. But that night when we did the A-B test, he said, oh my gosh, audio research sounds so good. And originally, he was planning to sell the audio research, but now it's like, what the hell, man? I need to keep both. I know some people are not a big fan of Macintosh because they might be still thinking of, of that older Macintosh sound. Low damping factor, slow bass, smooth but color presentation. That is so 70s. The modern Macintosh sound is nothing like that. But Thomas, you said, the bass was slower on the Macintosh compared to the audio research. Yeah, I said slower, but I never said slow. So compared to the older Macintosh, the newer Macintosh is more neutral and has excellent clarity. Definitely the modern sound. Sure, there is still some color, but most Macintosh gear have tone control to adjust the sound to your liking. I am a big fan of Macintosh and I own Macintosh gear myself. My own reference amp is a Macintosh. If you listen to it, there's nothing special about it. What, Thomas? There's nothing special about it, yet it is your main amp? Why? If you live with it for a while, you will realize it does everything well. Perhaps it is the fact that it does everything well that I don't find it special because nothing really stands out. However, once you remove it from your system, that is where you go, darn. That Macintosh 6700 can do everything solid. A bit like losing that ex-girlfriend you had and only to realize how amazing she was and you have been taking her for granted. The reason why my audio buddy Mr. Quad has the same Macintosh as me is because I lent it to him and after he tried it, he had to buy one to replace his Eagle H300. Never regretted it. And he told me he never thought Macintosh would sound like that. And he was still under the impression that Macintosh are for old grandpas. Now, audio research. I've owned a few, and the reason I prefer Macintosh is because 
audio research is more neutral. See, I like color, right? My audio buddy, Mr. Vintage, prefers audio research because he is into neutral sounding gear. The other day he told me, hey, you know, with uh, audio research, there's not a lot of artificially injected emotions with the LS25 he was listening to that day. In some systems, everything you listen to has emotion. Not realistic. Mr. Vintage doesn't like that. Now, him and Mr. Kanta both agree, whenever you listen to audio research, it does command your attention. It is like the presence of someone very important speaking. You just can't help but pay attention to him. Now, interestingly, uh, Mr. Jazz told me, um, he's another audio buddy of mine. He actually prefers the Audio Research LS25 over this Macintosh C2300 with his PassLab XA100.5 because he found it more musical. That's the thing with Synergy. You never know until you plug it in. Now, obviously, the choice for audio research or Macintosh comes down to a question of taste. Question of taste. My favorite line in audio that gets me out of trouble every time. Whether you choose audio research or Macintosh, one thing they both do extremely well is the soundstage, the imaging, the ability to create that 3D holographic soundstage with a 3D body in front of you is fantastic. Now, I know most systems can do it, but I've listened to over 100 systems. And for me, even though all systems can do it, it's a question of degree. In the properly set up high-end system, the realism is simply better. The problem is it has to be properly set up because from my experience, a synergistic affordable system in a good room will easily outperform a badly matched high-end system. Now, I can spend hours talking about Macintosh and audio research, but I think I'll end the video at this point. If you'd like to see me talk about high-end audio, like actually reviewing the Macintosh 275, for example, yeah, let me know in the comments. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.